Jeffrey Mung. And I'm Rigel Turner. And today is March 30th, 2010. And um, we're in the Barrow Media Center. Um, could you please tell us your name? Yes, my name is Milton Weathers. Um, and when did you go to Barrow? Well, I was trying to think. Uh, in the 50s, you know, I would, it would have been in the early 50s. Let's see, you start grade, it probably started here in 52, 1952. Uh, when was the principal, who was the principal here? Mrs. Tarkley. Mrs. Tarkley was the principal. She was a very strong individual. Um, she was um, pretty strict, but um, but we knew she was a fair person. She, we were all pretty scared of her, but uh, we knew that, uh, especially by the time we left, uh, in those days, there was a Clark County Junior High. Instead of middle? Instead of middle school, and had two years. And so it was, uh, I don't know, it was the seventh and eighth grade, where Clark Middle is now, that was Clark County Junior High. So I guess my last year over here was the, uh, Seventh grade. Um, could you tell us what a typical school day would be like for you? Well, one thing, I remember we, we walked from home. I lived uh, on Rock Van Road off McQuarter Drive, and and most mornings we we walked to school. There was a whole crowd of us. and um, So you lived relatively close to the school? Yeah, it was pretty close, although these days... Most parents would drop their children off, uh, I think. Um, at least my wife did that with our children. They were, we were close to Clark Central, but she wanted to drive them there, which I thought was unnecessary. I thought they should walk up there. But um, we had a crowd of us. We had 10 or 15 of us that, that would walk to school from, and we'd always stop up in Five Points and get uh, back crackers and something for a snack so while you were walking to school you had a little snack yeah we had well we were supposed to buy the snack for for a snack period mid-morning but we would double up i guess and get one of those sugary snacks they're all criticizing these days but and we had these wonderful police women that were crossing guards and uh, over the years that uh, i remember miss groover was there for years on lumpkin street and she just became a, a fixture of our childhood, Miss Groover. She greeted us every morning. And, and uh, so we'd stop in one of those two filling stations up there to head or, and, and buy some snack and, and come on to school. And I remember we all had, you still have cloak rooms here? The, the, behind all the classrooms, there was, a, there was a cloak room. And so I don't know why I remember the wintertime more than the summer. I just remember we all we had to hang our coats and gloves and everything in that cloak room. Now usually we just put in our stuff in our backpacks or mm -hmm. hang it up near. You know how some hooks have two hooks, mm -hmm. so you just may hang it up near there or put it mm -hmm. in the back or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every classroom had this uh, had this room behind it that was about five feet deep and had a door on either side. And uh, so we had to put all of our things away there and uh, had big old wooden desks. I think we I think we had desks that were passed down from the high school. Or I remember for the last couple of years, they were too big for most of us, but it made us feel all grown up that we had these big, big desks. Uh, do you remember how the first and last days of life? How the... The first and the last days were like... The last day of school? The first and last. Do you remember? The first and last. The first and last. Well, the first first day of school is always uh, exciting, you know. I, I do... I'll tell you one thing I remember coming to school. We used to enter where that big new... There's a big new wing that goes out, well, new in the 50s. <laughs> Not so new. Uh, it went out toward Rutherford Street, but that was the front of the school. The office was in the middle, in the rotunda there. So the office wasn't right, wasn't no, here as it is right now. It was in the middle of the building where that. I think that's where the teachers' lounge is now. Is it? 
so. And, the, yeah. and the front door was, was over there, you know, when you go into that. You've got two wings coming off this way, and then there was a big front door going that way mm -hmm. towards Rutherford Street and the, the you know, the playground. And, but we came in that door. We came in that front door. And um, I saw a picture of it a few years ago, and it was a... This building originally was what you call Spanish colonial revival. And so it had these three, I think three archways and kind of Spanish architecture. And then they mutilated all that when they put that big addition on. So then they, they had to come back and figure out another place to put the office after that. But I remember, yeah, I remember um, maybe the first day of school, I sort of remember being dropped off in a car and uh, being a little nervous about going in. Like, like something might go wrong or something? Well, you know, you just don't know. It's a, it's, a, it's a new experience. And so until you see some of your friends and realize that you're all doing the same thing, then you're not as nervous anymore. What grade are you boys in? I'm fifth. 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 And uh, well, I guess I'll talk about I'm not sure. You know, by the time the last day of school, we had, you know, we were past spring fever. We were just um, really excited to, to get out of school. They didn't, we didn't accomplish too much the last week. Because we you're all jumpy? Yeah, we weren't paying too much attention. Yeah. Um, I remember being scolded by the teacher that we still had to finish these lessons or we, or we weren't going to be let out for summer. We'd have to stay here all summer. And we didn't know she was just trying to scare us. We thought we'd have to stay all the same. Um, do, you, do you remember any favorite events or activities? Yeah, I remember Fun Night. Fun, do you still have Fun Night? We, we have a... Maybe it's a different name. We, we have like a spring fling, a spring fair kind well, of thing. Then we have Fine Arts Night, right? Yeah. Yeah, this Fun Night, it was cold weather, you know. And I, I remember that. That was, that was great. Um, that was a lot of fun, you know, we had the, you know, like the, the sort of go fishing thing where you, somebody's back there putting toys on the hook and silly kind of things like that, cakewalk and, and, uh, but I remember a fun night, it really was a lot of fun. It seemed like it was cold weather. And, uh, and you went a lot of shirts? And everything, I don't know what the heat is like here, what it's now, is it? It's probably not cold heat, though. No. See, when we were growing up, COAL, the, the furnace ran on coal. So, the, so they didn't have to burn it. It would smell like coal. You know, it put out black smoke, and the whole, um, the whole school smelled like, you don't probably don't even know what burning coal smells like. You know, you know what coal is. It's Those hard, black, hard rock black thingies. Yeah, really like a rock. Just a Except hard, they're rocks. Or they're carbon. Well, they are a type of rock, but it's a carbon, and uh, so it's, it's it it would put a That's black powdery. Yeah, stuff. it would put a sort of mm -hmm. soot yeah. on everything, and it smelled real strong. And but we lived in a house one time that uh, well, that was radiators too. And I guess it, I guess the coal. Now that I think about it, the coal must have boil the water and the water went to radiators that went out through the room to all the rooms and so in the winter time all those radiators sort of they hissed water and radiators? they would yeah they were steam and oil steam radiators? yeah not oil they were steam or water and they must have been steam and they would hiss and pop and clank and and so um, it sound like something was ending mm -hmm. and um, but we lived in a house one time with radiators and i remember the, when wintertime came and we started up those radiators, I thought, my goodness, this smells like old bear school. <laughs> uh, do you have any favorite memories? Um, well, one of my... Maybe not favorite, but just special memories? Well, I, I remember this one teacher, Ms. Little, and I wonder how old she was. Now that she's probably in her 20s. Uh, like some of these young teachers, and I just had a terrible crush on Miss Little. She was, uh, I think her husband was in the veterinary 
school or something like that. And and uh, years later, when I saw a picture of Ms. Little, I thought, my goodness, I I had a crush on that person. She looked kind of frumpy, and but we were all of us in the class. We were smitten with Ms. Little, and of course, we thought she was uh, um, so mature and. And I really, I'd like to know how old she was when she taught us. I bet she was 24 or five years old, which... Well, she um, was kind of one of the younger teachers? Yeah, she was a new teacher. Because we had a lot of old, old teachers here. Miss Tarpley was old. Uh, Miss Jones, Miss um, uh, Miss Crane, uh, Miss Maxine was... I mean, we thought those people were just ancient. Mm. And uh, they were probably younger than I am now. And we just thought they were... You know, just left over from the ice age or something. <laughs> and I bet, I bet you they were probably 45 or 50 years old, which is pretty young, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I remember, and I remember a lot of school plays. It's not like we always had, we had school plays going all the time. Now um, we have musicals. Uh huh. Yeah. I think you know, and I remember Miss Ison, who was the music teacher. I mean, and she came in with this, you know, pitch pipe. She would go, Poo, get us all on pitch. She was a funny little lady, like something out of a cartoon. I think she went around to all the schools, and she looked like a, she really looked like a cartoon character uh, of some uh, German uh, music teacher that was, she was real sweet. I think she was kind of deaf, really, and uh, but I think she went around to all the schools, and and um, she was um, kind of like circulating. Mm, yeah, she was she was pretty cute, and wore those funny old comfortable shoes, you know, sensible shoes. And when I look, you know, when I look back at those pictures, the fifties, it looks like it might as well be the eighteen fifties. It looks so really everything up until the sixties. When you see these black and white photos, it looks so old-fashioned. So it looks older than it really is. I think it looks older than it really is. I mean, we didn't we didn't realize, as my niece said, um, she asked if I lived back in black and white, um, and I guess we did. Um, you you already historical events that were going around, going on right around when you were here at Barrow. Well, let's see. I remember the I remember the Sputnik. I remember when the when the Sputnik the went up, the Russian the satellite. Mm-hmm. It was just about the size of a basketball. But I remember what a how impressed we were with all of that. And um, and I remember um, I came and I asked my teacher what uh, I think that was Miss uh, that was Miss Little. What was her name? Miss Callahan. She was a wonderful woman. And I remember uh, we were watching television, and Bob Hope, the comedian, was on television talking about the the Russian Sputnik. And and he, Bob Hope, said, "I would like to congratulate the Russians, but I don't speak German." Well, they speak Russian. Well, but see, and I asked Miss Callahan. I heard my father. I mean, I I meant to ask my father what that meant. And, I guess he left before I had the chance, and I asked Miss Callahan, and she said it was because of the the Russians and the Americans. We both had these German scientists that had come over oh, from after World War II. From World War II, so we both had the same German scientists. So the didn't know the Germans, so he couldn't congratulate the German scientists. He couldn't congratulate the Russians because he couldn't speak German. So that was the joke. So that. Uh, because it wasn't Russian scientists, it was German scientists. Just like Werner von Braun that we had over here in the space program, we had the same Germans. That we had half of the Germans, they had the other half of them. But, um, so I remember, and I remember that was um, when the Sputnik went up and we all were, you know, drew pictures of all that and, um, and studied that. So you were, you were really kind of like fascinated by this space thing? Yeah, I thought that was fascinating. And then, and I remember mixing, one thing I remember, we had mixing those temper paints. We had these big those cylinders. 
the powdery. It was squeeze, not the powders, not the squeeze. It was powder. It was powder, just like in a in a in a cylinder-like comet cleanser or something. You would we had to mix it up ourselves. I remember what a big solid mess that was, mixing up all that tempered paint. Um, and I remember a, a softball team. We had we divided up into two different softball teams, and and our our class, our, our team won um, whatever that was, some sort of field day in the spring. And I remember we won that, and uh, they gave us candy bars. I guess they don't give those sugary treats anymore, do they? But sometimes teachers give out like candy for a. Maybe like doing extra homework or for like rewards for mm -hmm. doing. Let's say like they have a team and they win some kind of little game mm -hmm. about review or something. Yeah. yeah, we'll get sometimes or maybe like an extra point in the test or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now you boys born in Athens? I have no. Where were you born? I was born in Texas and I moved to. Where? California. I was born in Texas. Oh. And then my family moved to California and then we moved to New Haven, New Haven Connecticut. Oh. And then we moved down here. I see. How about you? Uh, I was born in New Jersey mm -hmm. and my family kind of went back and forth mm -hmm. from New Jersey and Georgia. Mm -hmm. And you, all, you boys live close, so. you live close to the school? I live on the other side of Athens. Yeah, I side. I, I live Right down from Pipe Woods. Oh, you know what street Don't do you live on? Uh, Ridgewood. Ridgewood, yeah. Don't you bike down to school every day? Yeah. Yes, even in the rain? Yes. <laughs> what street do you live on? Uh, Meadow Creek Lane. And that's in East Athens? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's funny when I was thinking about it before I came here, I, I seem to remember. I remember wintertime more than more than other things. I remember those radiators sort of hissing and popping and and so hot in the classroom and sleepy, you know, it was it was the drowsy. Drowsy, the, the um, room was overheated. And um, So you didn't want to focus? You um, want to take a nap or something? Yeah, I wanna take a nap. And um, and the um, but I, but I remember the uh, we didn't we didn't have many discipline problems. Um, I do remember one time though Miss Dunson, who was we thought she was pretty mean. I, I got to like her after I was an adult and I appreciated her. But we thought she was pretty mean. And, and my friend Jimmy and I came to came to class in calypso pants. Do you know what calypso pants are? They're these white pants that um, I guess they're from. The style came from Jamaica or something like that. They have a rope belt. They're white. They come down to about here, have a split. And so we came to school with <laughs> those Calypso pants. And you probably weren't allowed to? Well, they didn't have, you know, they weren't any, um, they didn't have really have a dress code with it because nobody was wearing weird things. Everybody, they didn't know what was coming. There, there was no dress code because... Everybody, just the parents all made their children wear similar. sensible clothes. Everybody wore about the same thing. So there was there wasn't a problem with that. I mean that I remember. Not like later. And of course there was no um, no code about your hair or anything, long hair or or painted fingernails or makeup or anything like that for boys or girls. It wasn't you know, because so it just it just so didn't come up. We were pretty dull. So the teachers wouldn't really care if, like, some boys came in wearing painted fairy masks or something? Well, we didn't have that. That's, my, that's what I was saying. We, you know, we just didn't have that unless, you know, unless we... Kids would probably... Unless there was some examples and I just didn't know about it. But, but anyway, Jimmy Flanagan and I came in these Calypso pants, and about halfway through the morning, Ms. Dunson took us out in the hallway and she said, Nelson and Jimmy... You're not thinking about anything today except those Calypso pants, those silly pants that you're wearing. And she sent us home, and we both had to walk home and, and change pants and come back to school. 
And and uh, I remember she, telling, she didn't approve. The she didn't approve of it, yeah. And she was right. She said, she said, um, you're not thinking about anything Dick, except those silly pants that you're wearing. So you just walk right home and and, um, and come back in some in some sensible trousers. And I remember in that conversation, uh, Ms. Dunson looked at me and she said, she said, Milton, what if everybody in the classroom acted the way you do? And I said, Ms. Dunson, you know everybody in the class is not going to act the way I do. <laughs> and she sort of laughed, but she didn't, she didn't want to. But it sort of caught her off guard. And, and she wasn't way, expecting that. She wasn't expecting that. I said, you know everybody in the class is not going to act like I do. So uh, I think that's when she ordered us to go home and come back with some sensible trousers. Um, but, do you have anything else? <laughs> Nothing in particular. I, don't, um, I just have very fond memories of Daryl. Um, I don't know. Have you got a list of the people that you've interviewed? or How many more interviews are you going to do? Because I think this is our last one. Is it? Because mm -hmm. I know that I told a couple of people I was doing this, and I know other people that would like to like to um, say something. But um, um, I... Um, I think maybe they could make plans for yeah. the some last mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. <coughs> What do you plan to do with this? What are you going to do with this oral history? Just uh, Mr. Clemens, our media specialist, mm -hmm. he wants to put it on TeacherTube, mm -hmm. like a YouTube for teachers, educational mm -hmm. kind of. I know uh, a few years ago, my okay. friend Meg, Meg Gunn, I guess she was McGriff then, and she was writing articles in the Athens paper about Barrow School, and I teased her about an article she wrote that... Um, Talking about her father had gone there, Eulie Gunn and Troughton Wilson and Paul Hodson and all these older men that are gone now, my father's generation that had gone to Barrow School. And Meg got her word wrong. She said Athens, I mean, said Barrow School was just a just a virtual bastille of learning in Athens. Well, she, well, she met a uh, she met a bastion, but she said a bastille, which was the French prison. You know, she got the wrong word. I said, well, what, Meg, are they knocking the doors down or something? But um, I know she would be interviewed. And um, any particular other memories? I just have good memories of Barrow School. Um, and, of course, looking back on it, I realized that uh, it was just all white kids, you know? When you, when you look at those class pictures or, you know, you look at an old movie, it's just so strange in the America that we know today to look at these pictures and oh, you know, no people. black kids, no Asian kids, really no no Indians to speak of. Might have been some people with little Indian blood around here but not enough to show up and so they just passed for little white kids. So we had a whole whole um, so school. So there weren't any like, <coughs> other races? No, no other races. No diversity. No diversity at all. Um, I know when Dr. Sao came to, to the university, he was the first Chinese professor at the university, and his three boys, you know, they were the first Asians in any of the classes, and and uh, they put them in with white kids. Uh, but it's it seems strange now to to um, look back at that day and time and see these photographs of just just a. A completely white world. Because now everything's mixed up, yeah. not just mm -hmm. this one thing. No, it's, yeah, it's a, I think now it's more the way America should be, but we didn't know that at the time. You know, we didn't, that was before desegregation, that was before the civil rights movement, and we just, we didn't think about it. And so, um, but looking back on it now, we were in sort of a little white world. We just didn't, we just didn't know. Um. Is that it? Well, yeah. I mean, unless you've got some questions, I don't have any particular memories. I, I wish they would. If you've ever seen a look up an old picture of this school and see what a beautiful building it was when they built it. I've forgotten when they built this school. I know it was 75 years old uh, not long ago, but I don't know if that's when this structure was built. If it's the original structure, but um, I think we added a lot of. Halls. They did, they did, and they they really messed up the the entrance to the thing because it was it was really beautiful. But in the fifties, they didn't care anything about historic preservation. They just 
Yeah, it's upgraded. 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 Well, I, I really liked it. I, I remember, you know, it was, it was, what was, so kid, what it was stylish to say you didn't like any of the food at the school, but I liked the food. I remember we had these ginger, we had these sort of ginger desserts with a drop of lemon sauce on the sort of lemon, uh, not like, jam, but kind of a kind of like dollop of, uh, not syrup, but it was a kind of a, Pudding, sort of a lemon pudding on the top. It was a ginger, little ginger cake with a dollop of, um, of lemon pudding thing on top, and and everybody was talking about how gross it was and just uh, terrible. And I, <laughs> I didn't want to tell them that I liked it. Because they think you're like different. Yeah, right. And then, and to this day, I mean, I never have it anymore. But sometimes you see it in a cafeteria line or something, or some old-fashioned restaurant, and I order that. That orange, I mean, that, yeah, that, this bright orange, you know, it's shredded carrot with, with raisins in it. But it doesn't sound that good when you haven't tried it. It is good, though. It is good. Well, there's still lots of people that don't like it. Yeah, did you, did, in your cafeteria, did they, like, hand make the food there? Like, yeah, they, I or think Or did everything. they just, like, yeah, like, yeah. right now, uh -huh. I think now, they see, like, those... They, Giant frozen pizza. No, no, no. Around. We didn't have pizza. We didn't. Have, we had hot meals, you know, and they cooked everything. They, they came in the morning and they. Scratch and put stuff together. Yeah, they could cook tough from well, scratch. Well, you're not just big yeah. truck shipping in frozen no, pizza. Yeah, now, now we have no. like right. hamburgers. But well, and of course, you know, there's just a. Look as though they they were yeah. latex. Yeah, and there's a big push. Have y'all seen this Jamie guy that's come from England? He's he's he, they've changed the. Um, the uh, menu and the British schools to healthier food, and there's a big push now in the United States to to have healthier and healthier food, which I, I you except know, the schools want to save money. Well, yeah, really nutritious food is expensive. I think I heard on the radio like they want this lunch to appeal to kids. Yeah. They're playing like snacks and things, and well, it's, it's not that good. It's a tough. It's a tough one because if you. A lot of kids, if you really serve them the nutritious food they ought to have, they're just going to throw it out. Because they don't like it. They, they don't want like all it. the sweets and stuff. So it's a, it's a quandary because you don't know what to do. You want to make the children healthier, but you can't waste everything if they're just going to pitch it out. But as far as, um, no, I just I just have good memories of Barrow School. I have a, I just, I just don't remember anything other than getting in some fights in the playground. And um, I finally had to stand up to this guy. He picked a fight every every day in one week. And finally like maybe just, the kids you would consider, like, nobody really likes them, those people? Yeah, he was a bully. He was just a bully, yeah. He was just a bully. And like, the people where people don't really like that person? And yeah, kind of looking mean. back, you know, he was, um, he was probably a kind of underprivileged guy. And uh, I don't know why he was... Uh, when he was picking on me particularly, but finally, I, finally I, I beat him, I think, the last two days. I think we fought every day of the week in the playground. Then you beat him up. I finally beat him, so he left me alone. How did you beat him? I just got him around the neck and just, I was a little heavier than he was, so finally, I finally got him around the neck and I just, just hung on until I until gave pulled him, him down and and he, Surrendered. But nobody, no, nobody had split up the fight, you know. I guess there were, there must have been teachers out there watching, but they didn't break up the fight. They just watched. <laughs> well, I wouldn't accuse them of that, but the fights went on for a while. It seemed endless. So they didn't to me. really do anything. Especially when I was losing, it seemed like a real long fight. But uh, no, I don't, I don't remember the fights being stopped. Mm -hmm. And I remember kids just all in a circle, kind of. Cheering on, Cheers. yeah, Cheers. Like taking sides. I guess taking sides. That kind of classic fight, fight. Right, mm -hmm. fight, fight, right. Yeah. Well, now this, how many grades are over here? Goes through six. Yeah. 
Uh, pre-K, kindergarten, and So six, and seven, and eight is middle school. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you're the seniors over here, huh? Yeah. yeah. You're the big shots. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Well, and then next year you'll be a small shot. Right. And yeah, you, get, you get demoted. So is that all you want to tell us? I guess, unless you've got any particular questions. Um, I think we'll... I think that's it. Okay. Well, you're doing the interview, so you have to call the shots. Uh, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. I appreciate being asked. Okay.